Toronto real estate market fall 2019. Today we're going to talk about what's happening in Toronto real estate market and we're going to look at the stats that were just released uh, yesterday and they summarize the summer of 2019. We're going to project into fall 2019 and beyond to 2020. Hello everyone, this is Yossi Kaplan, Toronto real estate agent and mortgage broker with Search Realty and Search Mortgage. I help people buy, sell, invest, lease, rent, condos, homes, commercial properties, even land, uh, but mostly the downtown condos in the area, investment condos in Toronto and the area. Okay, so today I want to talk to you about what's happening in Toronto real estate market. By the way, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you've been here before, thank you for making comments and liking and watching and all that stuff. I really appreciate it. Thank you everyone for the new subscribers. Uh, I'm going to jump right to it. No introductions today, right to the numbers. Okay, go to trebhome.com slash index.php, the Treb Home. Just go to trebhome.com, it'll bring you to the same page. And right here in the news, August housing market charts available. So we're gonna look at some of the stats and what happened in recent. So when you click this link here, oh, current chart, back. I have it open here already. But if you will click here, current chart, you get to the same page right here, it's gonna open this PDF. Okay, Toronto housing, market charts for August 2019. I'm going to review this with me, view this with me, and then I'll show you what's going on in the market. If you're in the process of selling, if you're in the process of buying, if you're in the process of thinking of selling, if you're in the process of thinking of buying, you should watch this video because it'll give you an idea of where the market's going to and what to expect when we come to buy or sell. The first chart we are provided here, and this is from the Toronto Real Estate Board. These are the numbers they have. They crunch the numbers. Mind you, these are numbers for resale. They do not include assignments and they do not include new construction. When I remind you that the resale right now is the cheapest product on the market and the new construction is the most expensive and the assignments are somewhere in between. That means that if you buy resale, yes, you have to assume the mortgage as you close. You got to take over the property, pay for cash or take the mortgage. If you buy assignment, you'll have to close uh, sooner and if you buy pre-construction you got you know two to four years to wait on it that's why a lot of people uh, like to buy pre-construction but they have to pay more for the property 20 30 even 40 percent more on a, on a pre-construction property they would pay for resale and assignment is somewhere in between for example if you bought a pre-construction condo for 500,000 a couple years ago and the market is now 600,000 your son will sell somewhere like 550 580 you know somewhere in the middle so the, the resale at 500 similar condo, the assignment 550, and the, and the pre-construction be 600 for the same 500 square foot unit. Mind you, we are seeing now 500 square foot unit sell for $800,000 downtown Toronto. So just to put perspective on it, because you can get a house for that. So in here, monthly with three previous years for comparison, this is the amount of sales. How many, how many sales happen every month? So you can see that um, May and June, or May, April, May, and June are usually, you know, the, the, the spring months are the busiest months. That, that's, that's pretty good, consistent. And when you look at 2019, the orange one, you can see that following the trend of coming up to May as the peak, and now coming down to June, and then, so August was pretty good actually, almost 8,000 sales, 8,000 homes in Toronto, just in the Trump District, have changed hands. Uh, not include assignments and not include per construction, just the resales, okay? And you can see here the 2016 was the strongest year, 2017 was second strongest, 2018 kind of matched it, and 2019 is coming back up. Okay, so this is the number of sales, how many condos and homes are selling on the system. So, you know, at 9,000 a month, that's 30 a day, 30 times 30, 900, 300, 300 times 3, 900, yes, 300. So every every hour, there's some like eight to twelve condos selling in Toronto or homes. That's crazy. Okay, but we do have eight million people here. Treb housing market charts monthly with three previous years. This is the new listings. So you can see that in 2017 we had a lot of new listings. People put their listings back on the market, trying to flip them. And in 2019 it's much less, more or less the same as last year, slightly more, slightly less. But that, that's a healthy market. That, that's a stable market. You can see that July and August are almost identical. September will probably become identical. September obviously is always like more action. Back to school, August is the slowest because it's, it's the last of the summer you want to spend with your family. And January and December also slow because you're going to Christmas. Nobody wants to do anything, go on vacation. Okay? Here, 
Um, sales to new listing ratio, that basically gives you an idea of how active is the market, how healthy is the market. So if we have a lot of properties for sale, but not too many buyers, you know, that ratio is not good. But what you can see here is we have a good consistency, with the exception of 2016 was a crazy year. Um, although prices went higher in 2017, even maybe 18, um, we have in a pretty good, stable amount of sales to new listing ratios. So uh, we're averaging around like 40, 50, 60 percent for 2019 for the orange one. That means that for every two listings come on the market, more or less one would sell. A little more, a little less than one. That's good. Now. A lot of these properties that do not sell, they come back on the market at a lower price. They're just priced too high, okay? A lot of people come tell me every day, like, you know, I didn't get the 1.2 million from my house. Well, you didn't get it because you priced it too high, and unfortunately, um, it's not to do with the agent you selected. Your price was too high for the product you, you, you've offered. You know, pe people got to put their head in the pocket if they believe that it's good value. And if you ask them too much, and that's subjective, obviously, that's a perspective, the seller always thinks they're asking too little, and the buyer always thinks that they're buying, they're paying too much. But if, 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 your, if your condo or your home did not sell, it means that you ask for too much. You ask too much of what the market's willing to pay, okay? You're not wrong, you're not right. It's just that I offer uh, this thing here for $1, but the market's only willing to pay $0.90. Cents. Or I offer this thing for $1, and I have so many people throwing offers at me because they perceive it to be better value. That's what it means, and that's what you gotta keep an eye on. So if your property did not sell, and I have a bunch of videos about what happens when it didn't sell, it's usually the price is too high, respectively, to what else you can get in the market while people are observing it. Okay, now we get into the good stuff. This is the average resale home price, and you can see that in 2017 was the highest year on market here in April 2017, we reached over 900,000 price in 2019 is actually becoming the second best year second best year so 20 2016 had, had a big job if you saw 2015 it's also 2015 16 17 you look at 10 to 25 percent average increase on prices uh but what happens here is it's it's way way higher okay i think that my i can make my window a little smaller you can see more of the uh, you'll see you're too big we don't care for you there you go okay that's good so in 2019 you see the price keep creeping up creeping up which is it's a good thing because we live in an inflationary economy we want to see real estate prices going up by say three to eight percent a year okay we're looking at the four or five right now which is healthy but still imagine if you have a million dollar home okay and that house went up by five percent that means the house made fifty thousand dollars over the year he made just over four thousand dollars a month increasing okay that's a thousand dollars a week every week your house is worth a thousand buck more for a million dollar house that's crazy can you save a thousand buck every week because you can't buy the house today so the house with 900 the next year will cost 950 can you save that 50,000 over the year? That's the problem, okay? That condo was 550, but now it's gonna be 600. Can you save that 50,000? That's a problem, okay? That's also, by the way, the reason why houses are coming up uh, on price much slower than condos, because they're larger, because they cost more to maintain the end of the day. You know, you don't have the condo fees, but there's a lot of expenses come with the houses, especially with an old house and, um, you know, 50,000 increase in price of the condo, it's 10% over 500, but it's only 5% over a million. So condos are a very good tool of investment. That's why so many people buy them because you can put small amount of money down and make a big jump in percentage over your money. Remember, 20% you put in, the 80% you leverage. In the case of a house, of a home, it's a bit different because it's already expensive, so the price is creeping up, or not at all in some cases, okay? depending on your area. If you're in an old area with old houses, um, you can expect 2019, 20, uh, 2020 prices to be very stable. Maybe they come up with a couple points, maybe not. Okay, the condos will keep going up, that's why you can see, and the, and, and the, uh, the townhouse will keep going up, because that's where family can say, you know what, we don't need the old house that we have to pay a lot for, we gotta fix it, all that stuff. Just gonna find a condo with three bedroom, we can live maybe a townhouse, 
we can live in. There's a lot of these new townhouse communities, and they're like number one selling category right now for these reasons. You know, they're affordable and they're able, and you can make good money on them. Okay, here is the trend line. Trend line is kind of averages basically uh, uh, all the sales, so it's not no, not so much up and down because if you look. You gotta zoom out a bit. A lot of people forget. So, oh my God, you know, it only went up by five percent, or it didn't go up by what I spent, whatever it is. But when you zoom out, you can see. That, yes, we had a bit of a drop in the beginning of uh, last year after the 15 or 16 point plan, and now we're starting to come up. Okay, we're starting to come up. So that's these are sales number of sales. So the market's waking up. It's doing great, and I think we're gonna come back. You know, Toronto is a growing city. It's been growing since the 1700s, and it's still growing. will grow way longer after we're here. Uh, Treb housing market charts, uh, new listings, monthly time series with trend lines. So here you can see, um, and, and the trend line again. You can see that bounce that we had uh, earlier, and now we back to kind of normal. It's slowly creeping up, slowly growing, which is what we like to see in Canada. Uh, Canada is also not so quick on reducing the interest. That means that. Central Bank believes that Canada is stable. Central Bank wants to make money. Central Bank is not part of the Canada. It's not part of the Canadian country. It's not part of the Canada Corporation. It's not part of the Canadian government. It's a private company, by the way, okay? All central banks are private companies, and they decide how much our money is worth. Canadian dollar is not our dollar. It's owned by a private corporation, okay? It's not owned by the country of Canada, and it's not owned by us. Our money is borrowed from a private corporation we pay interest to. But that's, that's a whole other video, but I hope you get it because that's very important. Here we're looking at the average price, okay, in thousands. So look here. The average price, uh, as reported here, is almost at the peak of the market as it was. You know, it had a big jump, obviously, and you can see if you look at the, at the average price, not the, not the average of averages, but just, just the average for the month. It's huge, you know, 2017 was a crazy year, then we came down a bit, but now we're creeping back up. We're creeping back up, and you can see that it's creeping back up, and really after the 2008 blip, it just keep going up, keep going up, and I expect it to keep going up because we live in an inflationary economy. You know, people are, are buying with the expectation the price go up, and when you expect the price go up, everyone expects that it's just going to happen because we say, well, the price is going up now, so I'm willing to pay more, and the price is going up now, so I'm going to ask for more for my unit, and the buyer also understands going up, so everyone is going to pay more. But if we're going to see the reverse, where everyone is expecting the price to go down, the sellers and the buyers are going to start reducing the discounting. Now, the market today is a mixed market because um, I'll show you here, and that's very interesting. And I'll zoom in and just check that. Okay, let me just check in the other window. You can see it. Yes, you can. Can I make it sure you can see the whole thing? Okay, good. So what you can see here is the average price. Let's check and you can see those numbers. Here we go. The average price, the average price of Dichash home in the 416 almost did not, it's basically stagnant. It's the same, up by 0.3%. That's negligible. That means that the average price of detached home is not moving. Now, the semi-detached went up by 7.3%. I'm looking at the 416. The townhouse by 4.1, and the condos by 5.7. So the homes, the large, expensive homes, they're kind of sitting. Those are the million-dollar homes. The million-dollar homes, uh, anywhere from one to two million-dollar homes, and I did another video about the million-dollar listings, they're sitting pretty. They're getting what they're asking. Uh, if you're asking the right amount, you'll get it right away. If you're asking too much, you have to wait or relist it. Okay. Now, if we look at uh, the number of sales, people are buying detached. No, they're buying more detached, which is great. In the, in the 905, they're buying tons of detached, but they have more there, of course. It's a suburb. The semis, they're buying a little less. That's why the price is pushing up because there's less supply. In the townhouse, townhouses are on fire. I've been telling you a lot. Townhouses are on fire. As a reason for it, that's what's happening. Uh, the condos, uh, more or less, uh, demand is up by 2%, and the price is up by almost 6%. So that's good. And then if you want, you can drill down here uh, by price. So you can see our busiest category uh, is somewhere here. So it's basically between the 600000 to a million. That, that's the busiest category. 
There's also in the over a million, there, there's a bit of a jump there because a lot of the properties, a lot of the homes are there in that. I hope you don't hear these people because then you can hear all their business accounts, but that's okay with me. Uh, but the 1 million to 1.25 million, also a very busy category, the 561 homes detached, you know, that's where the detached, the detached are. Um, and the other category, like the condos, which average lower, you know, they're busy in, in this in this range. People are buying condos in the 400 to 700 more. Why? Because condos are smaller, slightly cheaper still. So that's what's happening. And you can see you can see what I mean. The detached are active. They stay stable on the price. The condos are active. The price is going up because more people want them. Same for the semis and the, and the, and the, uh, and the townhomes. Okay. And, and the breakdown just keeps going further and further and further down. You can even go by uh, regions and you can drill down. I'm not going to do this because it's a, you know, hours and hours and end. Uh, but here, Toronto C1, that's the downtown. Okay, so that'll be the, th th that's the busiest one with 373 transactions, totaling $286 million. And the average of C1 is 769. Okay, uh, 549, that's the n number of sales. And the C2, and then the other one would be C8, which is east of Young, okay? But it's about half of the volume, but the average price is not much cheaper. And then, of course, if you get to um, areas like C9, which is more homes, only 14 transactions, but 1.5 on average, and so on and so forth. That's what it looks like. You can do the same with the east, and we can even drill down further and further down. I want to go back here, okay? So... You can see what happened with the price, which is the most important thing, that the price here was very, very high in 2017, and then it dropped a bit, and now we're coming back up, and we will surpass the record of 2017 because our economy is designed to do it. We live in an inflationary economy. This is not in my control. No real estate agents, no so-called economist can predict this. This is just how it works. This is the central bank that sells us the money they devalue the money, they can sell us more money, they can make more money of us, and that's the result of what you're seeing. If you don't understand this concept of economy, you don't understand economy at all, okay? So, um, I can get more and more, but that, that's basics. Here, um, sales to new listing ratio compared to average annual percent change in home price. So, basically, you'll, you'll, you'll find some sort of a, of a, of a resemblance of a relationship between how many homes are sold and what the price is. Obviously, when more homes are selling, the market's going up, and when the market is contracting, usually the price will come down. Okay, so average price annual, the brown line you can see, when less homes are selling, uh, the price is down, and more homes are selling, the price is up, because everyone's getting excited and want to buy. Okay, so that's what we're looking. And this is the affordability indicator. And that goes share of average household income used for mortgage, principal, and interest, property, taxes, utility, average price GTA resale home. So you can see here in the affordability, okay, we had a big crash back in the 90s. If you were in Canada, if you were born there, a lot of my uh, viewers are quite young, so maybe you're not even born there, but your parents will remember that. Um, and then in the late 80s and 90s, uh, there was very high interest rate, there's inflation, and you had to spend a lot of portion of your income to to pay for your mortgage okay now we're looking at about 45 percent of that so that means that it was most affordable right after the like in the late 90s and then maybe like for a blink in 2008 9 10 and then the affordability comes back up which means it's more and more expensive for us to buy a home because we have less and less money that's why if you can buy property now if you can invest in property now you should probably do it because as this thing keeps going up, that means you need more money, but you have less. That's how it works. That's the trick, okay? That's the trick, my friends. All right, a couple more things here. I still got a little battery left. <laughs> I'll keep going until I run out. Uh, let's see if I can get... Uh, okay. Historic report. Okay, the historic report, the historic stats. It's all on the trailhome.com. It's publicly available. You don't need the password. You don't need to log in. You can see here, 2017 was the year on record at 822.727. That was the price average for trip for GTA. 2017. And mind you, Toronto itself, 416, way way above, but we average here. 
and 2018 is 787, so we had a drop. Where would be 2019? It's probably going to be above 2018 and maybe below 2017. With 2020, we probably eclipse 2017. Okay, um, I think I can have the prices here. Yeah, so you can see we're almost, almost, almost here at the average. This is the, the brown is the, the moving average, so it's a softer graph. And you can see here that we almost, almost, almost at that range of 2017. Okay, so the market is pushing up. It's pushing up. Had a bit of a drop, which is natural. Every after peak, there's a bit of a drop, and it keeps going, going up. Okay, and you can see here the average resale home price, uh, 2019 August is doing really, really good. Okay, so in June and July and in August, these three months, okay, 2019 did better than 2016, 2017, and 2018. Just by a little bit, but that's all we want. We don't want to go like way off the charts, <laughs> literally speaking. We want it to be gentle. A little bit at a time, you know, three, four, five, up to 8% a year. That's healthy. We had a few years of 20, 15 to 25 increases. That's too much, and then we need to scale back a bit wait till the market catch up, wait to release the inventory, people buy it, and we can go to the next one. And one of the best indicators of seeing all these is, of course, the new construction. Because... So this is a website I'm working on, torontoconsumersale.com. I've had this domain forever, and uh, I'm just uh, getting to do it now. And I sign up for this service, which will show you what's coming up for sale, the construction. So you can sign here for the uh, VIP club, and you can see here what's available and what you can do. You can go to the menu and then go to uh, where's the map search? There's the map search. And then you pop in, and I'll show you why I'm doing this. You pop in what you want to see, and it'll give you an idea of what's available. No construction, there's a lot of them. I'm going to put the well. Construction. Forgot to do that. The well, and that should come up. No, I had it before. Here we go. We had an extra character in there. So you could actually uh, sign up for the well here, and I'll give you a shout and get back to you with plans and prices. The reason I'm bringing the well because you're looking at about fourteen hundred dollar a foot now in the well, especially in the nice units, um, and that's a pre-construction already. Tridel has already started. Like th these buildings are already rising. There's eight cranes on the side of the giant site. And Shopify is going to have 254,000 square feet. I think it's in this building here on the east end, or it could be in this large commercial here. And there's a couple of large companies moving here. And another video that I told you how to make money off Shopify and Google, you can see these guys are making 120,000 to 180,000 dollars a year. They come, they come from school, they come from all over the place. They're renting, they're going to rent from you. So buy a condo, you can rent to a software engineer. A big company, a billion dollar company, a unicorn like Shopify, which is one of the most valuable, fast appreciating companies uh, in the world right now. It came out of Canada, you know, hiring so many people. Um, they have thousands of employees. That's kind of who you want to rent to. So that's, that's good. Okay, so that's some information about the well, and you can sign up right here. Okay, you can just sign up, uh, hit the button, and you'll sign up, and you get the information. Okay? That's how it works. So <clears throat> you can still find um, you can still find a lot of good condos at thousand dollars a foot. Now that's resale. So you go to yossi.searchrealty.co. It opens a search. You pop in Toronto in the area or keyword or address, and it'll show you what's available. Um, I'll show you how I do it. Toronto. So for example, I'll choose uh, I'll choose uh, I'll select Toronto one, which is uh, downtown. West, west of Young, C8, east of Young, and I'll sort it here. I'm running out of battery here, so it's going to get a little slow, but here's the latest listings. Okay, so you can see what's coming up. I, I didn't filter for rentals, so you get everything in here, but you can see what's coming in. You can see there's no rentals under 2,000. Most of them, there's zero bed, so that's a, that's a 400 square feet studio, maybe 300 square feet studio, and most of the stuff that comes... Studios will be, you know, 300, 400 square feet these days, $2,000 a month, okay? And if you want anything decent, two bedrooms, you're looking at almost 3000 a month, 
This is one bedroom, one bath with two, four, three, zero. Uh, fashion house uh, unit below me just rented 500 square feet. I think they got 2300 even. So that's uh, over $4 a foot. Okay. So remember, all these numbers I'm showing you here are numbers for resale. So they relate here. Uh, the new construction is going to be more expensive and the assignment is going to be more expensive. Assignment is going to be a little more expensive than the resale and the pre-construction will be the most expensive out of the whole bunch. That's how it works. Okay, So you go to riosi.searchrealty.co to search for, um, to search for uh, resale. You can pop in assignments or use the link on urbanrealtytoronto.com and okay, I need to use my assignment link. Go to urbanrealtytoronto.com I'll show you how to do it and then you can find assignments. So you notice assignments uh, more cost more than resale and pre-construction costs more than everything else. Scroll to the bottom go to assignments and it'll open the pre-program search and it'll show you what's on the system. There are more and more and more assignments available. This is just one of them. But back, the Toronto Con, the real estate market, the Toronto real estate market is doing really great it's pushing up, it's pushing hard. There's a lot of volume. There's almost 8,000, 8, 9,000 units resale sold every month. Every pre-construction condo is sold out. There are no units left, one bedroom, like decent one bedrooms, under 500,000. You cannot find anything under 500,000 for pre-construction. You're gonna have to go out of the core and maybe even out of the downtown proper, or for sure out of the proper, to find those. So if, you, if you're investing, you're starting out at the 500,000 range, get on it, give me a call. If you're selling, give me a call. I show you how to maximize the value you can get, how to sell the fastest, for the most amount of money. Yes, you can, within, within the average, you can work your way around, and I'll show you how to do it. And that's it for today. Yossi Kaplan, signing up.